Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com. Today's fun is rebuilding a top loading GE washing machine transmission brake assembly. This is not serviceable. So I'm gonna find that fun, of course. I have a friend who has a washing machine, a GE, uh, and it was making noise in spin cycle. Only spin cycle, just a rackety rackety mess noise. I went over, tore it apart, sure enough, the bearing at the bottom of this brake assembly is bad. Nothing else was wrong with the machine, but this brake assembly uh, transmission, you have to buy it all or nothing. This is not engineered to be serviced in any way either. This is pressed together and crimped. So there's some things to tackle. If you're just trying to fix your washing machine uh, and you have the 150 to 170 bucks with shipping, I'm gonna have a link to uh, Appliance Parts Pros. Those are double S's there, Appliance Parts Pros. They have an excellent video on how to get this out of your machine, and I'm sure some Kenmores and some Whirlpools will have the same thing. If, you're, if you open the front of your washing machine and you see this sitting in there, then you probably have the same type of unit. And uh, they have an excellent video there on how to take apart the machines and get these out. You can buy them there, put them in. My friend does not want to do that, can't do that at this point in their life. Okay, fine. 170 bucks is a pretty big hit. So I'm going to try and service it by replacing that bearing. That means we're going to have to do some pretty destructive procedures to take this apart, beat that bearing out, and get one in. But it turns out to be a very standard bearing. Uh, I ordered one off of uh, Amazon for $2.50. It's a 1 inch inner diameter, 2 inch outer diameter for mine. Uh, about point. 0.6 of an inch thick. It's a 6205 2RS. And I knew that because I could still read that on this bearing. This bearing is very bad. I'm into it quite a bit right now, but that's pretty bad and very noisy. And this was making quite the racket. So that's what we have to do. Now, if, if you're, it's gonna take quite a bit of tools and pretty good skills. If you don't think you're good at mechanically inclined enough or have good enough tools then don't try this just just buy this unit and it's not that hard to put in yourself follow the video over at that other link if you have to do this or you want to do this and you break this you know you're, you're, you're deciding to do this on your own if you think you can do it then you know that's your choice if you break it that's your problem if you hurt yourself that's your problem I'm just showing you how I'm doing it in case that might help you. But it's totally, you know, you're an adult. You decide if you can do this, and it's not easy. Okay, so we're gonna go look at uh, how I did this. Now, this uh, transmission is not serviceable. If there's anything broken in this uh, transmission, you, you don't even bother taking it apart. You're not gonna source any gears or anything in there. Uh, so this, you have to replace the whole unit then. The, uh, the transmission is where the bottom of this spins when your motor spins one way and the, and, the, and the brake assembly is engaged, this will spin. And when that spins in one direction, this transmission causes this, uh, this gear to slosh back and forth, which sloshes your, your agitator back and forth. And that's just doing that because I'm turning it. Now that's all working fine, so all the gears and everything are fine in here. Now if you buy this whole unit, you get a, you get a tub seal up here too, which I recommend getting anyway. Uh, because uh, if you have any water leaking down around here, it's going to get down to this bearing and it's going to wash the grease out of this bearing. I'm not doing that right now. If that turns out to be any water leaking down, it's easy to, to get to that tub seal. Uh, it's, well, I take that back. It's not. <laughs> it would be a lot of disassembling, but it isn't going to be as bad as servicing this guy. Um, I'm doing this video somewhat in reverse order because I've already gotten into this and figured out what was wrong. So I will try and use video editing magic to put this in somewhat of a proper sequence, but be, be, just, be, just be aware that this is slightly out of order uh, uh, in that I'm reversing the process. A big hassle was getting off the tub hub nut, and this wrench was like $10 on Amazon. I'll have a link to all this in my show notes. And this just goes down on there on the hub nut, this wrench then locks in, and then you just hammer that with a hammer for taking it on and off. That'll make it a lot easier putting it back together, and uh, it won't be such a fight. So if you got a chance, that's, that's what you want to get. A convenient little jig is take your hole saw and drill a hole in a piece of sacrificial lumber uh, that fits inside, clamps inside your vise, and then take this pattern of notches off of 
the bottom of this so that those all those uh, ribs line up with notches and then you can clamp this in your vise and you get a nice stable uh, jig to hold your transmission in upside down while you work on the bottom. And there you go. Nice and stable. Just to give you an idea how the clutch works. Now this is the disc brake and this is the brake. That'll sit in there and this will hit the bottom brace of the wash machine. The tub has a bottom brace. And when you turn one way, you'll watch this disc. It will go down and it'll go away from that this disc pad and hence it'll slide and the whole thing can be in spin cycle. And then when this turns back the other way, it'll engage, it'll pinch this brake pad between the, ba the base of the washing machine and, and this clutch mechanism, stopping this thing from spinning. This whole mechanism can't spin. And it'll continue turning backwards and that this backwards direction, uh, the spring releases and goes backwards and then it will actually agitate your clothes with the agitator. Okay, so now this clutch uh, release mechanisms in place and what they do at the factory is they they get this down real tight and then they they crimp it on they basically cold chisel like that I had to grind all that crimping off right there using my Dremel tool in the middle of that brake disc is, a, is essentially a clutch and the clutch has bearings that roll in these and that's what the uh, brass bearings are here but there's clips that have to go in first uh, a spiral clip has to go in there and that's the bugger to get off we're going to take a look at that how, put that, how I put that on. Now to get that brake assembly disc off you have to compress it because it's spring loaded underneath this disc and I set up this jig with that through hole on that piece of wood down there clamped in my vise and then two long vise clamps that compress that spring on uh, that disc brake on either side. That allows you to get to this guy. This guy is a spiral spring retention clip. And it's a spiral and there's two of them in there and you got to make sure you use lots of penetrating oil and lots of cleaning and scrubbing to get the before you try and take it apart. So you compress it like that. You compress it down like that and then you get inside here you scrub and clean with penetrating oil for a while until you can see these rings really clear. And then you just get a little pick, like a little dental pick, and you just peel them up and there'll be two in there. You can't replace them with regular spring clips because on the top of this clutch assembly, they have to fit inside there. And so a regular spring clip, like a one inch outer, you know, di outer spring clip won't will not replace these. And I don't know, you can probably source them, but I don't know how. Okay, so taking a closer look, once you get this compressed on either side, this is you're compressing these springs, and those springs line up with those holes there. I'm sure there's probably some special tool that goes down in those holes and hooks on the other side and compresses this, but this little rig works too. So there's this spiral spring retention clip, and you want to get in there with a dental pick once you clean it up real good, and you'll be able to spread it out and then peel it out of there. But once it's in there, that's what holds this assembly from popping up past this point the clutch point has to stop right there. And then when, that, when those are off, then this all can come up. So at this point of the video, I'm assuming that we've gotten the clips off and we are able to extract this. There were some bearings in here uh, for this clutch. That's all been taken out. This is the disc brake that stops the unit uh, when it's not in spin cycle. And we're gonna assume that there's a clip in there that we got off and there's uh, some grinding done. We'll assume that's done. Uh, and then this disc, this disc brake assembly can come out then. And then you're left with just this housing that, uh, uh, that holds this bearing. And this has to come off the shaft. And for the most part, make sure you use lots of P PB penetrating oil. And it's PB blaster. And you soak things for, you know, a good half an hour before you try and take it apart. And then after that soaking, um, this will start to come off. If it doesn't just slide straight off, you can get in there and tap it. And it'll eventually come off. And then at this point, you're into this, this bearing assembly. Now, this is, this is the old bearing. You can tell it's pretty messed up still. 
it's it's I kind of I put it back in there so I could show you removing it. What got complicated here is that there's crimpings. There's four crimpings on the side. Basically, they take a cold chisel and they chisel down some of the steel, and you can kind of see there's a mark right there, and they basically chisel down some of that steel to hold the bearing from dropping out. It's really not going to drop out. I mean, this thing sits like this. You would actually have to rise up, but that crimps it in. So what I get is a Dremel tool. And with my little cutoff wheel for my Dremel, uh, I get in there and I just grind off. This, this, this is the old bearing, so it doesn't matter if you nick anything. I just grind off those crimpings, those four crimpings, so that we can beat this bearing out. You're going to have to have a hole drilled in a piece of sacrificial wood for the bearing to fall through. So I get out a hole saw that you know you put on your drill and you drill you drill it in there. You just want to make sure it's bigger than than your bearing so your bearing can fall through. Because we gotta pound this out. And you want to make sure the hole is smaller than this ring here. So that when we set it on like this, as we start beating that bearing out, it can it can fall out that hole. Now you're not trying to save this old bearing, so you just want to get a socket that fits inside of this steel disc. You want to be able to get it in there. It's going to destroy the bearing even more as you beat on it, because you're not you're not getting on you're not getting on a lip, but it'll still it'll beat it out of there. 30 millimeter. It's a it's what we would buy at an auto parts store for taking off hubs on hub nuts um, on vehicles. And you can see that's pretty messed up. At this point, also. There'll be lots of crud and stuff in there. I take another Dremel tool. This is a little grinding uh, uh, grinding wheel. And I just get in there and I grind off all that gunk. Don't try and make it bigger whole. Just grind off the gunk and grind off any of those crimpings that you might have not gotten completely off. Because you want this to, you don't want to decrease the size of this hole or you just, or increase the size of this hole. You just want to clean it up good so the next bearing goes in good. Be a good time to clean this up real good. I use some, uh, some par auto parts cleaning got all the grease off because the grease had gotten slung out of here uh, when that bearing failed. Uh, we have the, uh, the chore now of driving the new bearing down in here nice and level so that it comes down and seats at this uh, lower ring. You don't want to use the same socket you used to take it out because this one has to be a bigger. It has to just fit inside, inside that uh, where the bearing goes. The object is if you line it up, you want it to be just ever so slightly smaller than your bearing. So as you're pounding on this outer race, you do not want to pound on the inner race, which will never be supported, and or nor do you want to be pounding on where the actual bearings are. You have to be hitting that outer race. Uh, I'm using 36 millimeter hub uh, vehicle hub nut remover, and it's thick wall. I recommend you put it on a, some newspaper because there's uh, some line, uh, lining up studs on the little collars and they will scratch or bang up your table or or you're going to be pounding on these so if you put some newspaper down it'll just cut into the newspaper it gives you a nice solid surface to pound with you want to get your bearing in straight and i always kind of start off just with a little tap just to get things kind of seated kind of work my way around carefully nice and even you don't want it to be uneven as you go you don't want to pound really hard like this because it's it's not really supported. And then you take a piece of sacrificial wood, you put it on there, and now you can drive it down until it's at least flush with the top, and then we'll do the rest with a socket. Okay, now we got it flushed with that, now we'll just drive it down until it seats with the socket. get that different tingy sound when you when it's all the way down and if you if you look in there you'll see it's it's all the way seated it, it hit bottomed out and now we have a really nice smooth bearing for that spin cycle interestingly enough this new bearing which is the uh, 6205 2RS does not have the dash 1 I don't know if you can read that there's no dash 1 on this one either you just have to make darn sure you have a 1 inch bore I guess so this is a brand new tub seal so if that was leaking which might have got the bearing wet, now it's not leaking no more.
Now the next step is the factory design was this uh, metal was peeled back, it was chiseled back um, to basically drive some metal lips in to hold this bearing from coming up or working up. And so what you need is a 3 16 cold chisel. You can get those at home, home store. Make sure it's no bigger than 3 16 And what you're going to see me do is I'm going to get a, just find a new spot here, get on some good steel and just chisel it down so that you just have a little burr of steel holding it in three to four places. Okay, I got I got a little better as I got more more practice. Not so great on these two sides, but these two sides, I got that I got the I got the angle a little higher and got in deep real from an angle and then kind of tilted up and went down. And these two came out just about right, holding that bearing, trapping that bearing down in there. And uh, I sharpened my chisel between each one of these because you want a really sharp chisel to, to dig in at that angle uh, and, then, and then peel that metal down carefully. The next job is to get this bearing assembly down on that shaft. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on it just to help it along. I've picked a socket that just fits the inner race. It doesn't go outside the inner race. That'll help tap it down nice and straight. Okay, that's nice and smooth now and it's all the way down until it bottomed out. Now the uh, brake, the brake disc assembly goes on. So we got our spiral retention springs on and we've taken our clamps off so this spins now but the the spiral uh, ring clamps um, will hold this assembly in now. Now you want to add a little bit of uh, axle grease in here and then you want to put on this brass disc and then a little bit more a little bit more grease. Not a lot, just a tiny bit. This doesn't actually spin or rotate. You just want a little bit of just a little bit of lubrication. And then you'll be dropping brass balls into these holes. Um, so that this clutch mechanisms can move freely. Don't lose these brass balls because if you do, I don't think you're going to find any new ones. Okay, now the top of this, is, this clutch assembly goes on, so I'll add a little grease to that. And now we want to make sure we get this on, kind of line it up with those bearings and with those uh, sprocket basically at the top. And it should just tap on. Okay, so we got the cramp, the cr the crimp, the clamps back on in our jig, so that we can put the brake disc brake down a little bit. Everything assembled in the correct position. And that gives us a little bit more drop, so that we can get in here and and just. Just, we don't want to chisel it down much because this is supposed to come back up, but this is its home position. We just want to try and crimp it a little bit with a little bit of a cold chisel just to keep it in that position. Okay, I, was, I wasn't able to really, I worked all the way around with the cold chisel, but there just, there isn't as much metal because I had to grind it off, and this is the level it needs to be at. So it's, it's probably, it's just supposed to be crimped just enough to keep this retained so this doesn't come apart and your bearings, your clutch bearings fall out. But for the most part, we'll just be real careful with the assembly, nothing will fall apart. And then when we put uh, the pulley on with the motor nut, it'll hold it all in position and in the proper spot anyway. So that's how that works. For preparation of assembly, we'd want this this just to be in its home position, roughly, and we'll just tape it down so you don't lose it while you assemble everything. When you put this in, then you take the tape off. That just holds that brake disc in place until you're until you're assembled. Okay, this is the washing machine all put back together. Veronica, my daughter, is going to show it working. It's agitating right now. You can just lift it and poke it in and poke it back down. That's good. Yeah, there we go. Agitating like mad. There's nothing in it right now, just water, but... Okay, we'll get to the spin cycle now, because that stuff part was really noisy. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's got nothing in it, but it's nice 
Yeah. Nice and quiet though. No more noise. Okay. Well, that worked out great. I guess yeah, you can say that's a success. Did.